It's been a while since we've talked about bats here in Oklahoma and joining me is Mark Turner. And Mark, thank you so much for sharing a little bit today with us. So you're in the Natural Resource Ecology and Management Department. So bats are in your wheelhouse, right? Absolutely, <laughs> so yeah. What are some of the basics that we need to know about bats? Yeah, so bats are, are really interesting animals. They're actually flying mammals. So okay. they're, they're obviously different from birds. Um, so they're, they're really unique in that way. Oklahoma's actually got over 20 species of bats and, and uh, most all of those are predominantly insect eating okay. bats. Um, in fact, bats can eat uh, over 600 insects in an hour. Oh, wow. And so obviously if you, you like sitting out in the garden and, and sitting out during the summertime, that's a huge thing if you've got much many uh, mosquitoes in your yard. And they're fun um, to watch too. Absolutely, <laughs> they're, they're really fun to watch. They used uh, this thing called echolocation to feed. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like sonar. Uh, they can detect insects in that way. Um, so it's nice for sitting out in the garden. It's also nice uh, in terms of agricultural production. They actually contribute about $3.7 billion worth of insect control annually. Wow. So whether you like just sitting outside and not getting eaten up by mosquitoes or you like having good agricultural production, they, they contribute a lot. Okay, and we need to get rid of that myth, right? None of these bats are going to attack you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of association of, of bats with, with them attacking you or them having gray bees. Certainly, we don't like picking up bats, but, right. you know, as long any as you're... Any wild animal. Exactly. It's the same as if you had any sort of wild animal or even a stray dog or a cat. So mm -hmm. if you leave them alone, let them do their job. They're really fun to watch. That, that you know, I love sitting out in the evening and watching bats uh, fluttering around in the air uh, while they're feeding. So, yeah, they, they contribute a lot. And they're all across our state, different species, right? So, That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So, so w tell us a little bit if we're wanting to kind of invite them into our garden a little bit more. How do we do that? Yeah. So there's been several things that have that have hurt several uh, bat species populations. Okay. Uh, things like um, destruction and closing up of caves. Um, in some places, there's there's not enough dead standing trees that bats will use to, to raise their young during the summertime. And so uh, some of the things that we can think about doing, obviously, again, bats eat insects. So we can think about maybe reducing insecticide use. Um, also just encouraging native plants. Native plants tend to have uh, more insects that use them. So that's, that's going to be beneficial for bats. But then uh, one other thing that we can think about doing would be uh, putting up bat boxes. Okay. Um, that's kind of an easy thing for a lot of homeowners to do. And um, and certainly, you know, if you have dead standing trees on, on parts of your property that are maybe a little ways away from your house, you could leave those standing as well. But in closer to your house, obviously, you might not want that. And so bat boxes offer a good opportunity to uh, provide areas for bats to roost okay. uh, without having a dead tree there right and, next and to your house. Different styles of bat boxes. What in particular should we be looking for? That's right. So typically, the bigger, the better. Okay. Um, if you have bigger bat boxes, they tend to retain temperature, uh, moderate temperature better. So, so bats are really sensitive to both being too cold as well as being too hot. Obviously here in Oklahoma, we tend to deal more with them being a little bit too hot. So we like light colored boxes, but relatively large boxes are good. Mm -hmm. um, it's also not a bad idea to put a few up, maybe some that are facing more to the north to stay cooler with others facing more to the south to stay a little bit warmer. The other thing to think about is placement, you know, potentially putting them out um, maybe 20 to 30 feet away from any trees. Um, obviously, the some birds of prey can live in those trees and they, they might prey on the bats. So you want to give them a little bit of space from that. You also want to put them about 10 to 20 feet up off the ground okay. um, because that allows the bats when they drop out of there uh, to be able to fly out easily. Okay. Uh, you can put them on structures, but the, the best thing to do is to put it on uh, on a post out in your yard. Because they kind of just fall out of the nest. That's right. right. That. Yeah. So yeah. They got to have at least at least 10 feet, if not a little bit more um, when they're they're pitching down to be able to, to get get up and moving. OK, so I would imagine you wouldn't want a lot of vegetation cover underneath that post. Or that's anything right. Too, that's right. right. You want it relatively uh, low, low growth. And uh, and yeah, that's that's a that's a good, easy option for folks that, you know, are wanting bats to use their property, but maybe don't want them either in their attic or, or somewhere else that they're going to be negative. Gotcha. OK, so no, I mean, the insects are their food in most cases, a lot of cases. Yep. And so there's nothing we can do other than putting up a house to sort of bait them in, right? Is that? That's right, plan? yeah. Like I said, I mean, the native plants are gonna help, yeah. but but really, you know, putting up the house, there, there are bats, uh, again, different species all across Oklahoma. And for most folks, you know, you're gonna see bats in and around your property. And, 
if you put up a house in a good spot, maybe they'll uh, choose to use it and you can have that roost on your property. Well, I know a lot of people um, use purple martin houses, right, to kind of entice and eat yep. some of the mosquitoes, but this is sort of your nighttime uh, exactly. <laughs> mosquito eater, right? Exactly, so, yeah. And they are nocturnal, right? So yes, they're yes. Not going to be bothering us during the daytime. That's anything. exactly right, yeah. I mean, it's it's not an issue to see a bat out in, in the early morning or okay. in the evening, um, but, but certainly you're not going to see them out during the middle of the day or anything like that. Um, they're going to stay stay in their roost and then uh, and then go go out and feed at night. Excellent. Well, for our viewers, is there any resources that we could direct them to that maybe would have some more information about different species in Oklahoma? Absolutely. So Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation has an excellent uh, field guide to bat species in Oklahoma on their website uh, that we can link in. And that's a, that's a really great resource for folks to, to look at the different types of bats that we have here in the state. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, Mark. Absolutely. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.